Welcome to lecture four for ENB339. Today I'll be talking about velocity, force, and the Jacobian. When you're designing a controller for a robot arm, you are usually working out how to set the velocities at the joints of the robot, which is where the motors usually are, in order to make the tool point at the end of the robot move in a certain uh, direction at a certain speed. So the first question which you have to answer is, if you set your motor velocities to certain values at the joints, how fast is the tool point at the end of your robot arm going to move in response to those joint velocities? The second question, uh, which is probably the more relevant one, is if you have a desired tool point velocity, for example, you might want your tool point to draw a straight line on a sheet of paper, what should you set your motor speeds to in order to achieve this straight line? And in order to do all this, you need some of the math that we've already learnt in this course so far, as well as a bit of basic calculus. So you'll need to know stuff like the derivative of sine x with respect to x is cos x, and stuff like that. So to start off, uh, we can look at a couple of typical joints, a translational joint and a revolute joint, uh, and learn the, the terminology and what sort of uh, velocities these joints contribute. So at the top we have a translational joint. So this is a joint that extends or retracts a, a linear robot arm. And the velocity at which the tool point at the end of this arm uh, extends or contracts is related to Q dash, which is the derivative of the joint length times K. And K is the unit vector uh, which indicates the axis of actuation. Because it's a prismatic or translational joint, there's no uh, rotational contribution, so omega equals zero. For a revolute joint, uh, the velocity at the tool point is a little more complicated. Uh, first of all, the velocity uh, is related to the rotational variable, q dot. It's also related to the axis of rotation, k, so k in the diagram is the axis about which this joint, this link is rotating, uh, and r is the length of the link. Uh, so that gives you the velocity due to the rotational speed of the joint at the tool point. Omega is more directly related to q dash, q dot. It's just q dot k, and k once again is the unit vector in the z direction, which is the axis of rotation. When you start dealing with a robot arm which has more than one joint, uh, such as this revolute and prismatic uh, robot arm in the picture, your tool point velocity, so that is how fast your tool point is translating and also how fast it's rotating, becomes a function not only of your joint velocities, but also your joint position. So it becomes dependent also on the configuration of your robot, in what particular orientation and position your robot arm is positioned currently. And the general form uh, for writing this relationship is that v and omega are a function of both all of your robot's joint variable velocities, q dot, as well as your joint variable q. So there's this useful matrix called the Jacobian, uh, which is a matrix uh, that's a function of joint position, so the, the values inside the matrix are calculated based on your current joint positions. And what this Jacobian does is it linearly relates the joint velocity to your tool point velocity. So in this uh, mathematical expression uh, here, we have q1 dot and q2 dot, and those are the joint velocities for joint 1 and joint 2 in this two-link robot arm. Then in front of it, you've got your Jacobian matrix J, and in brackets Q1, Q2, and this indicates that the format and numbers inside the Jacobian are a function of Q1 and Q2, your joint variables. 
and that gives you your linear velocity and rotational velocity of your tool point. Uh, and to start with, we're just interested in linear velocity, which is just the V component of the array. Uh, and the linear velocity is just the Jacobian for velocity, which is the part of the Jacobian matrix related to translational velocity times your joint variables Q. And if you expand that out uh, into full form, you get that expression at the bottom of the slide. Uh, which shows that the Jacobian matrix in this particular example has four elements. Those four elements multiply the two joint velocities, Q1 dot and Q2 dot, and they give you the linear velocity of your tool point, X dot and Y dot. So to actually work out what the elements inside this Jacobian matrix or at least the Jacobian matrix related to linear velocities, uh, what you can do is perform partial differentiation of your forward kinematic equations. So for instance, if we are trying to uh, work out the Jacobian that helps us work out the x velocity, x dot, which is expressed in the top half of the Jacobian matrix, uh, what we can do is do some partial differentiation so that's what we've done in this line. Uh, and this is basically the matrix uh, top line written out in full. And the partial derivatives uh, are dx dq1 times dq1 dt. And dq1 dt is just the same as q1 dot. And dq2 dt is the same as q2 dot. So they're all the same. Uh, and basically, you can work out each of the, in this case, four elements of the Jacobian matrix for linear velocity uh, using these four partial derivatives, which are written here. So let's use the specific uh, example and work out what the Jacobian for velocity is. So our forward kinematics uh, we can do by inspection. Uh, so our x position of our tool point is the length of the second link, q2, times cos of the first joint's joint variable q1, which in this case is an angle. And that gives us our x position. Our y position is very similar, except we use sine instead. This should all be fairly familiar. And what we need to do is do four partial derivatives in order to work out what the Jacobian matrix is. So first up, uh, what is dx dq1? So dx dq1, q1 is inside the cos, so this is negative q2 sine of q1. Uh, dx dq2, uh, well, that's just cos of q1, uh, dy dq1, well dy dq1, q1 is in the sign so we get q2 cos q1 and dy dq2, well q2 is just uh, multiplied by the constant sine q1 so we just get sine q1. And if you look at the uh, answers on the next slide, uh, you can see we've calculated them correctly. So we've worked out the four elements of the linear velocity Jacobian. So the other uh, part of the Jacobian matrix involves working out the part of the matrix that's responsible for the angular velocity of the tool point. Uh, and we call this uh, the angular velocity Jacobian J subscript omega. Uh, and for the example arm, we can do this by inspection, simply by looking at the, the schematic and working out how everything works. So the second joint is a prismatic joint, so it extends or retracts the arm. Uh, and this joint uh, won't contribute at all to the rotation of the tool point. The first joint is a revolute joint, Q1, uh, is going to be a, an angle. So it does contribute directly to the amount of rotation of the tool point. So if we write out 
are omega equals j1, j2. These are the elements in our angular velocity Jacobian times q1 dot q2 dot. The only part of this which is going to contribute to the tool point angular velocity uh, is the joint 1 because it's a revolute joint. Uh, and this, this works in this simple case just by doing it analytically, but there is a more general method for doing this. So we can combine uh, both of these uh, Jacobians that we've worked out, so the, the linear Jacobian uh, and the angular Jacobian, to form the full manipulated Jacobian. So this is the big mama, uh, this, this is our complete Jacobian matrix. And it has the form uh, that you can see there, uh, where it is has n columns, and n corresponds to the number of joints of the robot. So this is for a two-joint robot, and it has m rows. And m is the number of variables describing the motion of the tool point. So we have uh, x and y, which are linear velocities, and we also have omega, which is a rotational velocity. So we have three variables describing the motion of the tool point. So how do we actually use this Jacobian to do something useful? Uh, and in this case what we're going to try and do is work out uh, what the linear velocity of the tool point of this arm is given a certain arm configuration and given that we have certain joint variable velocities. So we're using the example arm again. Uh, it's pointing in the x direction uh, but and joint 2 is extended by half a meter. And our challenge is to find the tool linear velocity if joint 1 is rotating at 2 rads per second and joint 2 is extending at 1 meter per second. So these two velocities are going to be what we plug in for our q1 dot and our q2 dot variables. So joint 1 is 2 rads per second, so we've got 2 rads per second as the information. Uh, this is going to plug in for our q1 dot. Uh, and joint 2 is extending at 1 meter per second. So this is going to plug in to our q2 dot. We also need to plug in our current joint variables, so not the joint velocities, but the, the variables or their positions or angles. So Q1 uh, is going to be zero because the arm isn't rotated at all, and Q2 is going to be half a meter because it's extended by half a meter. So if you plug these numbers into your Jacobian matrix and into your velocity array, you'll get the uh, numbers at below, and if you multiply these out, you'll get this end array that x1 dot is 1 meter per second, y1, y dot is 1 meter per second, and omega is 2 uh, radians per second. So the more frequent thing that you're going to use the Jacobian for, well typically speaking anyway, is you're going to have a requirement that your tool point move in a certain direction at a certain speed, uh, drawing in a straight line is a classical example, and you want to calculate how to set the joint velocities in your robot in order to achieve that tool point trajectory. Uh, and to do this, uh, we need to do everything in reverse, because so far we've been using known joint velocities to get a tool point velocity. We want to do the process in reverse. So if we in, take our original uh, velocities equals the Jaco sorry tool point velocities equals the Jacobian times our joint velocities uh, equation. What we can do is multiply both sides by the inverse of the Jacobian, and this will get rid of the j in front of the q dot and have q dot all by itself, 